Okay, well, this series is going to be on um, just basically the Linux operating system. We're going to look at a lot of different aspects of what makes the operating system, kind of the boot process. We're going to make our own little live CDs and stuff like that as this series goes on. There should be an annotation on the screen for the full playlist. There'll be a new video every Monday. So if you're watching this and you don't know why you can't access videos uh, at a certain point in the playlist, it's because they haven't been released yet. There'll be a new one every Monday. Um, but today, to start off, before we even get into to the, st the main parts of this uh, series, uh, I'm going to show you how to mount an ISO, because we're going to be doing a lot of different mounting of different images and file systems, and uh, we're going to be looking at mounting ISOs quite a bit to manipulate them and whatnot. So um, I'm in a folder here. The only things in this folder are three ISOs. Uh, the core version of Tiny Core and Tiny Core is or Tiny, uh, yeah, Tiny Core is a uh, distribution of Linux. Uh, the core version of it is just a nine megabyte, uh, no GUI uh, operating system. This mini ISO is the net install of Debian. It's uh, minimalistic for just doing an install over the net. It's about ten megabytes. And this is a slit has four full uh, desktop uh, operating system, which is about 35, <clears throat> excuse me, 35 megabytes. Uh, and that's with a full desktop and lots of tools and a web browser and all that stuff all within 35 megabytes. I, I love tiny distributions of Linux. And that's one of the things that, that gets me keep on going with things like this series where I learn more about how this stuff works so I can make my own minimalistic little installs which are great for ARM devices and other stuff like that which we will also be getting more into in this series. But first off we want to look at how some of these uh, systems are set up and you'll want to burn it to a CD and waste a CD just to look at it so we want to mount it. Now there are GUI ways of doing this. Uh, I think both uh, KDE and GNOME, uh, I think both uh, their uh, you know, Nautilus and was it Dolphin for KDE, either have the feature built in or plugins built in for mounting ISOs, but it's usually built into the mount command here that you can do it from uh, the shell. Uh, and first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a mounting point. I'm just going to create it in the folder we're in. So I'm just going to make a folder, I'll call it ISO. So if I list now, I've got three files and a folder, and the folder is obviously empty because we just created it. So now let's say I wanted to mount the slit has, and forgive me if I'm not saying that proper, that's how I pronounce it. Uh, I can say mount, and the name of the ISO, and where I want to mount it. Uh, and you have to be root or sudo to do this, so we'll say sudo that. And we'll hit enter, and you'll get a warning. Uh, it says ISO seems to be mounted as read only, which makes sense, because these ISOs are read only. Uh, they are basically, think of them as if they were CDs. They're basically CD uh, file systems, which are read-only. Uh, so technically, if you wanted to manipulate these, you'd mount it as we just did. And if I now list out what's inside this folder, you can see what's inside that ISO. And we can read these and we can run stuff on them if, if, if need be. Um, but to manipulate them, what we could do, and we might do in future tutorials, is extract them to our hard drive unmount it, make our manipulations, and then create a new ISO or burn it to a CD. Uh, but for right now, I'm just showing you how to mount it, but you will probably get that warning of uh, mounted system uh, is uh, read-only, as it should be. Uh, but now, since we're, we have that slit has ISO mounted, we can look through these files. You can see there's a boot folder. Um, I'm sorry, not list, but move into it. Am I not in that folder? Okay, I'm not in that folder. Sorry, I kind of got rid of my prompt here just to give us more screen on the room screen on the room, room on the screen for this tutorial. And you can see here's most of uh, what's needed to boot the operating system. And that's actually, we're going to talk about that more in the next tutorial. Uh, so let me uh, sudo unmount that. And I can say here, just unmount the ISO. And that's because I'm in that folder. I'm in the folder where this ISO mounting folder is. If I was not in that folder, if I was somewhere else on our system, I would have to give it the full path of what I want to unmount. Um, and of course, you don't want to be in that directory. You'll probably get an error saying that it can't unmount because the directory is being used. But we'll unmount that one. Now, doing the same thing, sudo mount, and we can do 
the mini ISO, which is the net install for Debian, and mount it to that same folder. Um, but I also want to say, we're just doing that, and it seems to be working on my system here, but I know on some systems, you're going to have to say dash O space loop. Otherwise, it won't mount the ISO. So uh, as a habit, I pretty much always do that. Obviously, on some systems, it's necessary, others not. I'm not really sure why, but I'm pretty sure I've had some systems where if you don't put that, it won't mount the ISO. But here on my Debian system, it seems to work either way. Again, you get the same message. Now, if I list out the ISO directory, you can see uh, the Debian uh, net install image, everything that's on it. Uh, you notice there's no boot folder. Uh, and just depending on how the operating system was set up, but basically the stuff you're looking at here is what would be in the boot folder. It's just a matter of how you set up your boot loader, uh, which we'll once again get into in future tutorials. So again, I will sudo unmount the ISO folder. And oh, I said mount. U mount to unmount. It was just telling me that it's already mounted on loop device zero. Uh, and we'll do that now. If we list out our ISO, you can see there's nothing in there. We can also just run the plain mount command. And you can see that it's not mounted. Control L to clear the screen. Uh, so in the last uh, ISO we have to mount, and I'm just doing the example over and over again uh, because we are going to look at all these ISOs in uh, our next tutorial. So again, uh, on, I don't know if it's the version of mount I have or other things on my system, it automatically detects that we need to use loopback for these images, but just as a out of habit, I like to put that in there. Uh, we will give the ISO we want to mount and where we want to mount it. And again, it says read only as it should. List what's in that folder. And you can see in this one, there's nothing in the main directory other than a directory to the boot uh, folder. And go in there and you can see it's only got three files, well, three files in here, two files in a folder in here. And then you can go down one more directory and see some more information there. Again, that's the stuff we're gonna talk about in the next tutorial. And as you can see, they're all set up with different file structures um, and that's just when you create the system the ISO uh, you can do it different ways uh, you just have to tell your bootloader uh, what to do depending on how you have things set up so I'm just going to unmount the uh, ISO folder now as you can see that's unmounted now and that is how you mount ISOs uh, it should work on pretty much any Linux or Unix or Unix-like uh, or Unix-based system. So I'm assuming that this would work on pretty much all, most operating systems, because most are one of those three or two. It's either a Unix-like or Unix-based operating system besides Windows. Um, and that feature should be pretty much there on most of those systems. So uh, again, we will look at more on what some of these files on these ISOs do in next week's tutorial. So I want to thank you for watching. Uh, please visit my website, filmsbychris.com. Chris with a K. There should be an annotation on the screen to the full playlist. Again, new video every Monday, so the playlist might be small now, but it will grow. And I hope that you have a great day.